Hello and thanks for tuning in. My name is Wilbert Mutoko and I'm so excited that you decided to watch this video. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to minister to your people. Lord, I pray that you anoint my voice, you anoint your word. Anoint the ears of your people. May this word reconcile your people. May this word bring unity and love. May this word bring restoration to families. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Today, I'm talking about honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. Many people want to be blessed. Many people are doing all kinds of things. They are moving from country to country looking for blessings. Can I tell you something? Blessings are not as far as you are thinking. Blessings are not as far as you think. Let me tell you where you will find your blessings. Blessings are in your father and your mother. That woman and that man that suffered, that brought you to earth. It doesn't matter they took care of you or they did not take care of you. That man and woman, they carry a blessing for you. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6. Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. Hallelujah. If you can take your Bible, that will be awesome. I will be very grateful so that we can read together. I hope you have your own Bible. Verse 2 of Ephesians chapter 6. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. When you look at the Ten Commandments that God gave to the children of Israel, one of the commandments is honor your father and your mother. God packaged the blessings for you in your mother and your father. It doesn't matter whether your father or your mother, they are sickly, they are dirty, they are uneducated, they have sinned against you. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. They could be drunkards, they could be witches, I don't care. But your parents carry your blessing. Many people have got money to go to the zoo and buy bananas for monkeys but they don't have money to send their parents. When was the last time you bought a drink for your parents? When was the last time you, do you even know the size of the clothes for your mother or for your father? Very important. Let's tell each other the truth. Honor your father and mother. Respect your father and mother. Take care of your father and your mother. Verse 3 says, that it may go well with you and that you may live a long life. Now, you want to live long, right? You want things to go well in your career, in your business, in your schoolwork. Let me tell you the secret. It's very simple. Honor your father and your mother. I think you have heard the story of a young man that grew up in the rural areas. The parents were suffering. They did everything, menial jobs, to make sure they can take care of this boy. This boy grows up. He gets a good job. He gets good money. He marries a beautiful wife. He has children. He decides to ditch his parents. He builds a home in a low density suburb. And the mother hears of where he was staying and she followed there. She came with some mice and some small, small things from the village. In tattered clothes, where could she get good clothes? As she arrived at the gate, the security officer says, can I help you, madam? He says, oh, I'm the mother for so and so. The security officer ran inside the house. He says, master, there is a woman who claims to be your mother at the gate. This guy comes and he quarrels with the mother. He says, you must go back to the village. You are sleeping in the guard's house. Tomorrow morning, you are out of here. He gave the mother a little bit of money. He said, you go home. When I want to see you, I'll follow you in the rural area. A son looking for a curse. It does not matter whether your mother has been good to you. It does not matter whether your father has been good to you. The Bible is not saying honor your father if he's a good man. The Bible is not saying honor your mother if she's a good woman. The Bible says honor your father and mother that it may be well with you. Some of you, the reason why things are not well with you is because you have dishonored your parents. I'm a man of God. I'm a pastor. I'm an apostle. I tell my church members, you buy clothes for me. Have you bought for your mother? You 
buy clothes for your pastor? Have you bought clothes for your father? You buy blankets for other people. Have you done it for your parents? You kneel before me. Have you knelt before your father? The same thing I tell married women. You kneel before me. Have you knelt before your husband? It's time to tell each other the truth. They that worship the Lord shall worship him in truth and in spirit. It's good to give. It's good to be a blessing. You can be a blessing to orphans. You'll be a blessing to widows. You'll be a blessing to your friends. You are a blessing to your pastor. You are a blessing to your church. You are a blessing to your community. Beautiful. Congratulations. Have you been a blessing to your parents? Some people, as I'm talking now, Christmas is approaching. Your parents don't know where they will get sugar, but you are working. You have gone from country to country looking for solution for your problems. Let me tell you where your problems are coming from. One of the major sources of your problem is that you are cursed. You need your parents to remove a curse from you. They may not have cursed you willingly, but Jehovah God himself. Are you with me? Jehovah God himself, he deals with you if you don't wake up. When was the last time you bought clothes for your parents? When was the last time you bought a drink for your parents? You are a nice guy everywhere. You are a nice woman everywhere. Everybody knows you for being generous except your parents. In this age and era, your parents can still take sugar and put on a teaspoon and burn it in the, in the, in the fire so that they can have tea. They cannot afford to have tea or coffee. But you are working. May the Lord grant you grace. God has sent me to, to speak with you. It doesn't matter what your parents have done. Some of you are expecting your parents to say, I'm sorry. It doesn't work. And I'm going to give you my own example. When I grew up, at one time I thought that my mother was not my mother. I'm telling you. My mother was that type of person who could shout, who could use a abusive language. Very loving mother, very hardworking woman, but she was bitter. It took me time to understand her. Until at one time I sat down and I said to her, Mama, I don't think you are my real mother. Now I'm grown up, tell me who is my mother. And my mother was crying. My son will bet. I spent 12 months suffering with your pregnancy. Others come out at 9 months, but you came out at 12. I suffered and today you tell me I'm not your mother. I was so convinced that she can't be my mother this way. But guess what? As I gave my life to Jesus and I was growing in the Lord, at, at church they preached the gospel of forgiveness. They preached that we must honor our father and our mother. And I went to my mother and I asked for forgiveness. But guess what? I also wanted my mother to say, I'm sorry, my son, for whatever wrong I've done. Can I tell you something? You have been waiting for too long for your mother or your father to say sorry. There are very few parents who will say sorry to you. Your parent carries your blessing. I'm telling you, your parent carries your blessing. You are the one who will apologize, but they may never apologize. Ah, I left the village unhappy because I apologized and she did not apologize. I went back. I prayed. I fasted. I was preached to again. I went back to the village again, this time with a sober mind. I said, Mama, please forgive me. Anything I did or I said when I, from the time when I was young, anything I did wrong against you and my father, please forgive me. And my mom could feel it from my heart. Now I was not expecting her to ask for forgiveness also. Because now I understood that a parent does not have to ask for forgiveness to you. And my mother now forgave me. If I can tell you, my mom, we are like friends now. I call her, she calls me. It's important. And I'm not talking of that only. When I say parents, honor your parents, I also mean your parents-in-law. There are some people who are married. They take care of their parents, like their biological parents, and they neglect their in-laws. That same way you are attracting a case. <laughs> 
Let me explain what I mean. Because when you become married, a man and a woman, you become one thing. Your partner is coming from somewhere. You are coming from somewhere. So imagine if I am sending groceries every month to my mother. And then we are not sending anything to my wife's mother. In our case, our, our daddies are late, so we are left with our mothers. So when my wife and I are talking, we just say, Mama called. It takes time for you to know which mother, because mother is mother. It doesn't matter. So we try by all means to take care of our mothers the same way. Monday, we send, if it is $150 or $100 to the other mother, we send the same to the other mother. We equate them and both of them know we love them the same way. The other one stays in the rural area so she has she wants to buy seed she wants to pay people who are hating cattle and things. She will sort herself from that money. And then the one in town she wants to pay for you know council monies and what rates and stuff like that she sorts herself from there. But we try to equate our parents. Do not destroy your marriage. Do not destroy your union because one is trying to take money privately to their relatives. Be transparent. Honor your father and mother. Honor your father and mother. Imagine, you know, there's something God revealed to me. If I'm sending things and money to my mother only, huh? and then we don't send anything to my mother in law, you know what that means. It means that my, my biological mother is going to bless me. And my mother-in-law is going to curse her daughter, whom I'm married to. A curse plus a blessing equals what? You get zero. So if you want a true blessing, be a blessing to both sides. As much as possible, be a blessing to both sides. I know some people are saying, oh, you don't know my mother-in-law. Yes, but it is God's commandment. Honor your father, honor your mother. Others also, your wife or your husband, now has pulled you. You are now doing, th doing things for the biological parents and the siblings of your wife or of your husband. And where you come from, you have neglected. You are attracting a curse. Some spouses also are very wonderful. They will actually tell you, you see, I think your mother is a witch. I think your father is a witch. Let's stop sending things there. Because each time we send things there, things begin to what, 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 what. Be careful. Honor your father and mother. Now they are old. Now they put on tattered clothes. Now they look like a witch to you. Do you want true blessings? Honor your father. Honor your mother. And it shall be well with you. And you will have long life let's not lie one to another let's not stop crossing border to border saying that I'm looking for blessing I'm looking for somebody to touch my life the people who need to touch your life are your parents if your parents are smiling ah your future is bright my friend if your parents are happy with you your future is bright I know somebody is saying what if it's confirmed that my parent is truly a witch Pray for your parent. Pray for them. Do everything you can. I know somebody very close to me concerning in-laws. She came into a family. The father-in-law and the mother-in-law did not want her. They wanted their son to marry elsewhere. For 10 years, this woman continued to send food to the father-in-law and mother-in-law who doesn't want her. To the aunties who didn't want her. Ten good years. Prayer. Fasting. Blessing them. Prayer. Fasting. Blessing them. She soldiered on. If I tell you today, that woman is one of the most loved person. By that same father-in-law. By that mother-in-law. By those aunties. You have to soldier on. You cannot afford to be in a family and you divide people. Even when they say they don't want you as a son-in-law, even when they, when they say they don't want you as a daughter-in-law, do what you are supposed to do. Honor your father and mother. And while I'm still there before I stop this video, I want to warn you something I have learned. When you hear your wife talking bad about their mother or their father or their siblings, either shut your mouth or say something positive. I don't think your mom really meant that. 
Mm, don't you think your dad actually meant this? Um, I don't agree that your brother is a bad person. I think your brother... Say something positive. Don't join in talking negative. The issue remains for you. This one is just talking because they are angry. After some time, they will look at you and assume you are the one who started the whole thing. You will hear now the other one, your spouse asking you, so you said my brother is wicked. Uh -uh. I didn't say your brother is wicked. You said your brother is wicked and I said I think it's true. <laughs> Be careful. When your spouse is speaking negative about their relatives, don't support it. Get it from me. Learn very quickly. You must be a uniter. You must be a uniter of people. Stop dividing people. Be a blessing. You have been looking for blessings everywhere. Start now. Be a blessing to your parents. Be a blessing to your parents. Send them money, if possible, every month, every two months. You may not be able to give them everything they want. But I want to encourage you. The greatest blessing comes when you honor your father and you honor your mother. The Lord bless you. I would love to hear your comments. I would love to hear what you say. May the Lord bless you. Please share, comment, like, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my Facebook uh, page. Thank you. God bless you. Wilbert Mtoko is my name. Bye for now.